Boss, move! Never. Watch out! It's coming! Oh no! It's like Austin Powers, Austin Powers. Yeah. As you guys know, we're always looking for cool cars, cool builds. We've actually seen this car before at the SEMA show, but we never had a chance to shoot it. And now we're out here on the front straight shooting the beast. So what's your name? Rod Nielsen from Hot Rods Restos. My mind's, my head is about to explode right now because this thing is so cool. Like, what is this thing? It's a 1972 Mazda R100, uh, but it's a, the, about the most extreme version I think you could create from one. And uh, it's running a 20B3 rotor and it will make a thousand to the wheels. Okay, so to put that power down to the ground, you've done something very special to this thing. Yeah, I, cre I created my own wheel, and it's one three-piece wheel, and has two 205 40 16 Falcon tires on it, and they share the same air. So they grow and contract at the same rate, would yield me a 410 20 16 tire if it existed. So need some tire to put that kind of power down. But it's a true dually. Well, it kind of is a dually, but it isn't because it's one wheel. A dually would be two wheels. So everybody calls it a dually, and I'm cool with people thinking it's a dually. It's all good, but it's actually technically one wheel. So you actually drive this thing pretty hard then. We have already raced it at uh, Auto Club Speedway in Fontana at 7 stock 20. It was a blast. It was the first time driving the car, and uh, it performed amazing. We did SEMA. We won Battle of Builders, uh, Sport Compact. It was awesome. Now weather's here. It's summer, and I'm going to start driving it some tracks. So where are you actually from? Uh, Abbotsford, BC, Canada. So just, just north of the border. Well, thanks for driving it down to the States for us to see this thing. It's just so cool. All right, so uh, the reason why we're rushing here is because uh, Lewis and I, we've had a 15 hour day of shooting straight. And to top it off, what we're gonna do is shoot more, of course, to get you guys content. Wow, the finish. The finish is just unbelievable. I mean, yeah, well, there's no excuse for an ugly track car, right? You, you can make a, br a pretty one and still have a lot of fun with it. I, I just, I kind of feel like this is such a cool trend that pretty track cars. Oh, just incredible. You know, I'm surprised it actually fits pretty good, but I'm sure you moved it back. Yeah, it's the, the front of the motor is uh, center line of spindle. The car actually with me in it, it weighs just over 2,400 pounds and it's a 5248 rear bias with the front engine. It has a three rotor in it with a uh, Borg Warner uh, SX400 72 millimeter turbo. And uh, I say it's just a lot of fun. So how much power did this chassis originally come with? It came with 100 horsepower and that's why they called it an R100. It was rotary powered with 100 horsepower. So So you essentially 10 times did you, you <laughs> multiply that by 10 and then add some crazy rubber in the rear. Oh my god, that is just unbelievable. Holy turbo. I mean, when that thing kicks in it's violent. You're just holding on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. So this is actually not paint then? That's ceramic, yeah. Like uh, header paint, and uh, they use it on guns and everything from Cerakote. Gives it that cool satin finish, and then all this, this is a candy cobalt blue. Love that. That is just so cool. The body is just so wild. Did yeah. you have a designer? No, I do all the design. It all comes out of my head. Uh, most of the, the engineering, everything, the construction of the car, um, how it's going to be produced, it all comes from my brain. Incredible. Love it. So what about the interior? The interior is, is pretty sparse except for the cup holders. It's all about the business. It's a T56 Magnum, has a S1 sequential shifter, ADS uh, handbrake, and uh, it's running on Microtech fuel injection with their touch screen. The dash has been modified from an original one to fit with my application. It's made out of fiberglass and we built that. I love that uh, the seats match the yeah. engine block and the transmission and everything. It's got to get pretty hot in there, huh? It's yeah. actually not bad and it's not the kind of car you spend a long drive in. I mean, it runs on E85 and it's a thousand horsepower. So you get in it for about a half an hour and you're pretty worn out. Wow. I can't believe you could see. Yeah, we put the entire a, rear end and yeah, everything. Kind of a thing. I got a Mustang. We did that with real glass. This is a plexiglass window. And um, 
with uh, backlit with LED so that you can see all the suspension through because it's not your normal type of setup. We took a uh, basically a late model dirt track type suspension with a winter's quick change diff and adapted it and shortened up all the travel on it to make it work with a road course car. And it, it's a 100% anti-squat. So it, it really, really works well. I've just never seen anything like that before. I mean, no. that is so cool that it actually has suspension on the actual quick change. Yeah, well this, the top bar you're seeing there with the spring on it, that's called a pull bar. And that's actually controlling the rotation of the pinion to allow it to roll up on the spring to make it bite better when I take off. And um, the diff is actually rolling on what they call billet bird cages. So my, my suspension contact points on either end is set up in a watts link and the diff actually pivots right on them. And it allows it to actually rotate up and absorb the impact of the acceleration and just makes it just really hook really, really well. You could have just sealed it all up. We wouldn't, nobody would get to see it. So, you know, there's crazy suspension underneath the front flares and in the front end and, and with those on and the tires filling the hole up, you don't get to see anything. So at least this way we can see something really cool in the back and people get a real kick out of it, especially at night like we're shooting right now where you can really see it. In the trunk, we are running twin braille batteries and it has a fuel safe with a radium FCST in it, running uh, aeromotive fuel pumps and regulator and uh, all the power in the car is controlled by uh, a speed wire. It's uh, hands down one of the best systems I've ever seen. Super compact, clean, um, really easy to install uh, for this kind of a vehicle. It's amazing. And uh, everything on the car we did was, everything is exposed and easy to work on because if you have a failure with something at the track, you gotta get to it quick and uh, try and fix it as best you can or it just ends your day. So I didn't wanna make it a show car where you hide all the stuff and make it look like nothing works. So, and that's kind of the look I was going for on anyway, a track car, you should see everything. So this is actually registered on the- It registered, it has backup lights, it has horn, turn signals, wipers, high beam, low beam. Um, it's registered driving street legal car. It's even got three mufflers on it to try and keep it a little bit quiet. Incredible. I'm gonna put a $5 bill here so you could see how wide this actually is. And there's two of those exactly the same. Amazing. You know, that's kind of the thing is, uh, I'm guessing you built it for yourself. You didn't build it for anyone else. It was completely unrestricted. I got to do exactly what I wanted because it's my own car. And those, you know, we built as builders, you want to always try and get to that. And sometimes you just got to build your own car to break out of the mold of what everybody else is doing and just set the standard for something different. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us your car. You mind starting it? Sure. For us? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for uh, doing this. So my eyes are burning. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, the, like the last time I had this was uh, when I shot NHJ Top Fuel. Um, you know, I really like how throaty the sound is. Yeah, and that's, we've got four inch exhaust on it that actually goes from oval, round to oval, goes through two mufflers, goes to oval, and then goes back to round. It's all vibrant components and uh, it really produces a really nice deep sound. I you can feel it right in your chest. This is the quietest rotary car I've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, okay, I take that back. Quietest modified rotary car. Usually when I film a rotary car, I have to put in earplugs because it's just gonna blow up my eardrums. But this actually sounds so crisp. And, sm and deep and it's got a totally different sound than what everybody expects it to sound like. Yeah, I was expecting to have to run that way to get away from the sound, but you could drive this in Southern California and the cops will not even bat an eye 
when you drive by. I mean, they'll see that it's a crazy car, but it's actually not that loud at all. No, it's so cool. no, it's that. And that was important to me because it is, it is something I want to take and drive to events, um, especially local. I wanted to be able to not have to trailer it and just hop in and enjoy it. It runs flex fuel sensor, so I don't have to run it at full power on E85. If I want to just cruise it around, I can run it on 91 octane up in Canada and just enjoy it. And that's what I built this for was to get as much seat time as I can in it. Very cool. That's a wrap. I don't even know what else to say. This is so cool. Thank you so much. I know. It's so sick. That's so sick. It's so sick. Like who needs a trans tunnel? You know? That's just extra weight. It's extra weight. <laughs>